It's Dragon Ball time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today we're gonna to have a look at the SH Figure Arts Sung Gohan in the battle clothes, which is more precisely, I feel like the Saiyan armor would hit it better. So we got Gohan from the Namek arc, continuing that lineup, and this is not a release by Premium Bandai, so it's a lot more an expensive one. Is it worth it? We'll find out, but I'm definitely down for more Gohan. I feel like it's really an underrepresented character in the entire lineup from SH Figure Arts, you know, among all the Gokus and Vegetas. Getting this version of Gohan, I'm really looking forward to it, so let's get a look at the figure. I feel like I review a lot of small figures recently between Anya Forger, Krillin, and now this guy. He stands at about barely 10 centimeters to the top of his hat, which means we are going up to, well, barely 4 inches. Well, almost 4 inches. Size comparisons. Here's Jolter, Neca Michelangelo, the Sage Figure Art Son Goku, Krillin, the strongest man on earth, Krillin in his Saiyan uniform, the old school Kid Gohan, Bulma in her Namek outfit, and Darkseid. Overall, look in detail, and man, does he look angry. I do gotta say, I love the face gaunt, this stern, angry look on it. It kind of fits like with the inner rage of Gohan. It's also very clean, don't have any issues with the paint applied, the same goes for the hair. Although I'm still not kind of sure, is the hair? I think it's painted, but it might as well just be like black plastic. Then again, it's a little bit too shiny for that, I feel. Then we get into the neck area, which we do have a little bit of bleeding, but not really big of an issue. We do have also some spots for the Saiyan armor, which go over the line, you can clearly tell there's some of the uh, yellow kind of goldish paint we have on there which goes over the line but for the rest of it it's mostly mostly clean also this one doesn't really line up but uh, those are small issues but then again it's a small figure it has a big price spoilers the uh saiyan armor is in a matte white same for the gloves and we got also the blue in the armor in the outfit so to speak the spandex the saiyan spandex as we move back around, yeah, I mean, honestly, there's not really that much to talk about here. I'm struggling to find points where I say, like, it's painted, it's painted well. There's not really much issues with the paint, so I'm just going to move on to the articulation. So the head has, like, a big ball hinge, which goes into another ball pack, so you can move that forward quite nicely and can move it forward. This is forward. The other one was back. Haha. <laughs> Side to side tilting also works somewhat, but we do also have neck articulation, which I guess is just on the ball. So combining these two forwards quite nicely, backward also we do have a lot of room, and it does also tilt side to side with that. Then we have these uh, shoulder pads, <clears throat> which are on just these bad, crappy hinges. So arm articulation is pretty good. You do have this butterfly joint, which goes all the way out, so you can bring the arm forward for some blast poses and whatnot, but still, I mean, does this look good to you? No, it doesn't, so, I mean, I talked about this in great length with the Krillin figure, also, you do have the ball joint, which moves in the butterfly joint, you can shift that back and forth, but you do also have the hinge in the shoulder itself, then we go down to, well, first and foremost, the bicep swivel, and then the elbow joint, which is a simple ball hinge, which isn't lined up correctly right now. And if you got this properly lined up, here's like the elbow joint, you can bring that up, and also you can swivel the entire ball joint in there, but it's kind of stiff, so be careful with that. But then you also have the fist on a ball hinge. This one moves quite nicely, can also be swiveled around. For the chest area, goes forward. You really have to give it a good push, and to the back, and also I don't like this noise, but it swivels pretty much all the way around. Ugh, why does it make a noise like that? Also does tilt side to side slightly, and for the hip part you can also rotate that around. Makes the same ugly noise like it's about to snap off, so I don't feel like forcing it any more than this. I guess that's a much as well, about as much as you get, and you also have some wiggle motion in the hip area, also does doesn't really tilt side to side because it's blocked by the molds high kick <coughs> that goes out to the side and also to the back and once again you can rotate it on the thigh brings that all the way around then we have the double hinged knee which i feel like the upper part doesn't really go up that much 
And also at this point, do you really, is it really a good idea to post like and uh, put like a kneecap on it when it just kind of looks like that as soon as you move it around? I mean, I guess if you just move one area of it, it's decent enough, but still. And you have a ball hinge for the foot, which barely does anything. So it does go forward to the back. Shifting it is really just have, once again, apply a little bit more force to it. Because the entire mold just blocks it. I mean, the mold looks clean, but still, it's not great. And you have a toe hinge. Now for the accessories, I gotta show you my favorite part, which is this other hair sculpt, which looks pretty cool. I love all the detail in there as it kind of jumps into battle and it flutters all around. That's really cool. And it's also kind of weird because like Saiyan hair doesn't really move around like that, doesn't it? Anyway, it happened in the show, so it's canon. And we have the Freestar Dragon Ball, another Namekian Dragon Ball. And for the faces, wow, mine are kind of mangled. So first and foremost, the faces look good. You have like the serious and this happy face, but you can tell there's some black on it in the eye especially and uh, some on the forehead. Don't know what happened there. And then for these two faces, we have the other, the left one, which has another black spot on the forehead. And this one, which is kind of like, there's some damage in the eye, so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Big issue. We have another chest plate, which once again, I don't really know what it's supposed to be accomplishing, just like with Krillin. It seems like it's go, it doesn't go up as much as these ones, so maybe opens up some more articulation, but, you know, again, Going back, to the chest plate is not the problem. This, this is the problem. Having like alternate shoulder pads would have been the idea, would have been the solution, the plan and uh, everything around, but they didn't do that. So we got some open blast hands, we got some karate posing hands or whatever you want to call it, you know, as you launch into battle, the pose. And then we have the chop hands and this kind of grabby hand, which I don't really know. It's like a choking hand. I would say it's for the Dragon Ball, but there's like no way in hell that kind of fits on there. I tried it beforehand, but you know, it just kind of like, you know, do, do I need to show you anymore? No, okay. So that's there. And I said that as a joke, of course saying here moves around whenever they feel like it. But um, also just like looking more at this one, it seems like the front part is a little bit more glossy than the back part. I don't really know what's up with that. And these, this small strand in the front, that just kind of annoys me. I don't know if I... Might just cut this one off because it looks all kind of mangled and it looks like it shouldn't be there. And finally, uh, one thing I kind of skipped over because like playing around with him real quick, I realized this also isn't super nicely, super cleanly connected. So, um, final thoughts of this figure. Quality control issues is the biggest issue, the biggest problem here because of the black spots in the hair. Well, the face sculpt actually. But I'm saying most of the hair does kind of cover it up and uh, I had like the... Regular face which I had on there also had like a little bit of black on it because that's probably the issue, just the hair kind of rubbing off on the forehead. Articulation is decent for a small guy, it, you know, really the biggest issue once again are the big shoulder pads. And other than that, I mean the figure's alright, but we're going back to this being a Bondi Premium release, which means a big fat price tag for such a little guy. Uh, it's kind of hard to recommend at this point. I think like this figure is way better than Krillin. Uh, really moves around a lot better. But other than that, I mean like, yeah, the issues with it are just... This is not premium. This is just expensive. And as such, I think like both Krillin and this one, it's a fairly easy pass, I feel like. I feel like you, you, you save a lot of money and probably waiting for a better release than these two guys. I really wanted them because I like the designs, I like the Saiyan armor, and I want to kind of like have a complete display for my uh, for my Namek characters and whatnot, but this one just isn't great, so <clears throat> I'm not recommending it. That's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever Gohan wants.